What's up everybody? Comic Quarter 410 here with the final installment of my EC comic book collection. Most of you that know me know I'm a huge fan of EC's Golden Age books. And today I'm going to show some Golden Age Mads, some Panics, and some other EC books that I have. But to get started, here's an issue of Mad that I'm extremely happy to own. As you can see, it says at the top, first issue, the new Mad. This is Mad Magazine number 24 from 1955. And this is the first issue of Mad where they went from the comic book size format to the magazine size format, which is still being published that way to this day. And they did this to avoid regulation from the newly established Comics Code Authority. And it really was a brilliant move on EC's part because it kept this book funny and unregulated for many years and kept the book great. I believe that this is also the first time that Alfred E. Newman appeared on a Mad cover. I could be wrong, but I'll have to double check that. But I think it may be. I'm also really happy to own this copy of Mad 27. This is a pretty nice copy, too. It has this gorgeous painted cover by the late, great Jack Davis. And this is also the first published art of Al Jaffe. So I'm very happy to own that one. This is Mad number 28, the spring issue. Uh, there's three different versions of this cover. They just say something different right down there in the banner. This one says, with enjoyable article on guided missiles and how they can blow up Earth. So I don't think any particular version is more desirable than any of the others. Here's another one I'm really happy to own. This is Mad Magazine number 29. Nice, bright, beautiful copy. It just has some chipping on the outer edge there, but really nice other than that. And this has the first published artwork of one of my all-time favorite mad artists, Don Martin. Really, really loved his stuff as a kid. I thought it was hilarious. So happy to have that one. Here's Mad number 31 with his beautiful painted cover by Norman Mingo. He did a lot of the covers for Mad in the 50s and 60s and some of the most legendary I probably should have pulled this issue out because I believe this is the issue that has a painted back cover by Joe Orlando. So sorry I didn't do my research and figure out which one that was. So I would have remembered to pull it out for you. Might be able to Google it though. Next up here's another famous cover by Norman Mingo, Mad number 33. Yet another really famous Mingo cover, and this is a wraparound for the 5th anniversary issue of MAD, issue number 35. And it has a little map inside telling you who each of the people are on this wraparound. He put in a lot of famous figures, celebrities, and even cartoon characters of that period. Very cool cover, and this is in really nice shape. This one is not in nice shape. I found this, I think, for a buck. I believe this is Mad 37, it even has some paint spilled on it, but this is a Norman Mingo cover. Mad Magazine number 40, with this painted cover by Kelly Freas. And Mad number 41, this is a, um, a really famous Kelly Freas cover that's been reused many times. Great cover. Um, Mad Fall Issue. Mad number 67, Kelly Freas cover there is again. Here we have another classic Norman Mingo cover. This is Mad number 62 with this painted cover of Fidel Castro getting ready to smoke the exploding cigar. Mad number 83. Unfortunately, somebody drew on this in pen, but got it cheap. Have another painted beauty here by Norman Mingo to Mad number 85. Another Norman Mingo cover to Mad number 87. Yet another Norman Mingo classic here to Mad Magazine number 88. Holiday cover to Mad 92, Mingo once again. And here we have yet another classic Norman Mingo cover. This is Mad number 93. 
I'm sure many of you recognize this cover. It's been reused by Mad quite a few times. Very happy to own that. And this is Mad number 99. And this is where the great Jack Davis made his return to doing art on Mad after being gone for 50 or 60 issues. So happy to have that one. Uh, this next one I did remember to take out for all of you. Uh, this is Mad number 106. Another Norman Mingo cover here. But the reason that I pulled it out is it has this Tarzan strip on the back cover done by the late great Frank Frazetta, one of my all-time favorite artists. So very cool, and I'm very happy to have that one. Here's two oversized uh, paperbacks I have that I'm very happy to have. This one has a big crease down the middle, but it's tough to find. This is Mad Sergio Aragonis on Parade, and he's always been one of my favorite Mad artists. Me and my brother loved that he drew all the crazy cartoons in the margins, and then I was a huge fan of Gru the Wanderer in the 80s, and still am. So I'm glad to have that one. And this is the second annual collection of Mad Follies oversized and I also grabbed this this is probably the most successful of all the mad imitators it's a little crooked there in the mylar but um there were many mad magazine imitators but cracked was by far the most successful this is crack number one and you can see by the border how much they ripped off mad even the cover setup of their golden age magazine so happy to have that though and next up is Mad's companion title, Panic. Very happy to own these. I have the complete run of it. It only went 12 issues, but I have them all. Um, Mad creator Harvey Kurtzman was dead set against EC publishing another Mad-type humor title because they already had a bunch of rip-offs. And Williams Gaines was like, hey, everyone's ripping off Mad and making money. Why shouldn't we make double the money? And Panic, even though short-lived, ended up being even more controversial than Mad Magazine. Very happy to have this copy of Panic Number 1 with this uh, Al Feldstein Christmas cover. And with the holiday theme, there was a story inside where Santa Slay had a sign on the back that said, Just Divorced. And that pissed off a lot of parents in the 1950s. Divorce was a taboo subject. They were not happy. But even worse, further on in this book, there was a Mickey Spillane parody story where one of the blonde bombshells that Mickey Spillane tried to pick up ended up being a transvestite, which was incredibly taboo in the 1950s. And when parents saw that in a comic that could end up in the hands of children, panic caused a real-world panic. And police actually came to the EC office and arrested a few EC staffers that took the rap for William Gaines. Um, very, very controversial first issue. Here is Panic number two. Beautiful cover by Al Feldstein, and this one's in pretty nice shape. Panic number three, another very controversial issue. Um, many of you know about the Seduction of the Innocent book, Dr. Wortham, the subsequent Senate subcommittee hearing on how comics were negatively influencing the youth of that period. And EC decided to have a story in here poking fun at the Senate subcommittee hearing, which turned out to not be a great idea because they went after EC the hardest. And as you know, that hearing ended up creating the Comics Code Authority, which regulated their books and their horror titles and, and sci-fi titles were never the same after that. And also in this issue had a story with Old King Cole, and he's smoking weed out of his pipe. So, again, this isn't stuff that goes over well in a children's book in 1954. Panic number four. Um, this cover is by the great Basil Wolverton. These ugly women are very famous. He also did a cover of these type of ugly women for Time magazine that's quite famous. And... In my opinion, Basil Wolverton is second maybe only to Wally Wood in creating the greatest looking 1950s sci-fi monsters and aliens. So, very cool book. This is Panic number five. I believe this is an Al Feldstein cover. 
And uh, as you can see, EC's answer to CinemaScope widescreen type movies meant to be looked like this, or looked at like this rather. Yep, Feldstein. Here we have Panic Number Six. Very tough to find in nice condition, obviously, with this all white cover and the type of paper that EC used. Their cover stock was notoriously cheap, does not age well. Um, but glad to have it anyway. Here's panic number seven. And uh, this cover says, this cover has a dual purpose. After you finish the magazine, you can use it for patching torn tigers. And this cover always reminded me of those horrible Zubaz pants that people wore in the gym uh, in the late 80s and the 90s that had the tiger stripes that were the color of their favorite football team or whatever. Horrendous, horrendous pants those Zubaz were. I'm glad they, you don't see them around anymore. This is panic number eight, and obviously this is a parody of the eye chart you'd see at the doctor's office or the DMV. One of my favorite panic covers here, this is panic number nine, Comic Fidential. Digs up the dirt and drops names. They made fun of Superman. Can Superman really leap tall buildings at a single bound? Dick Tracy, the truth behind Dick Tracy's black suit and Smiling Jack, you know. Uh, nowadays, wouldn't legally be able to get away with making fun of other publishers, top guys like that. Here is Panic. I believe this is number 10. Is that correct? But yeah, this is, um, this one is made to look like a book in the manila envelope that they would ship you your subscription titles in and i remember my uncle roger he would get a lot of ec books uh mail subscription back then and since there were no bags and boards back in that day when he was done reading his tales from the crypts or ec sci-fis or mads he'd put them back in the manila envelope that they were shipped to him in and that was the best way to keep your comics safe in that day and as a result he had some pretty nice personal copies this is panic number 11, made to look like the Wheaties box, but it's called Wheaties. The Breakfast of Chimpanzees, free in this package, one Cadillac ashtray in fine print. Great stuff. And here's the final issue of panic, probably my favorite cover of the series by the late, great Jack Davis. A pretty decent copy as well. So very happy to own that complete run. And uh, I feel like it's underrated for its overall important in the history of comics and EC. All right, next up is a title that didn't last long, and I can't imagine too many kids reading this book. As a result, my copies are very nice of EC's psychoanalysis. Uh, often when I pick up Tales from the Crypts or EC sci-fi books, they're in rough shape you can tell they're well read by kids and these look like they maybe never have been read once but these covers are by Jack came in here psychoanalysis number one psychoanalysis number two number three really crazy looking cover always like that was wondering what this girl was being treated for if she's seeing hallucinations like that and uh, here's another copy of number three Number four, this one's in pretty awesome shape too. And that's the full run of Psychoanalysis. Um, also got picture stories from world history, and these were publisher William Gaines' favorite books that EC did, these educational books. And uh, I'm not sure if that's a John Severin cover. I'm going to have to look that up. But uh, very happy to have that. And here's picture stories from world history, issue number two. Some really great covers there. And I haven't really opened this can of worms yet. I found this dirt cheap. This was less than 10 bucks, so I bought it. But I haven't bought too many crime suspense stories. I need to get more because of covers like this by the great Al Feldstein. This is Crime Suspense Stories 19. Rough copy, but well worth what I paid for it. And uh, someday when I finish up my Two-Fisted Tales and Tales from the Crypt, might start on these in shock suspense stories. So, everyone, thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I always appreciate your time. 
Take care of yourselves and enjoy your comic books.